When it comes to pushing the boundaries of space exploration, SpaceX is a beacon of courageous dreams and groundbreaking achievements. Among its many innovations, the Raptor engine for the Starship stands out as a testament to SpaceX's ability to transform wild ideas into reality. But before we delve into the marvel of the Raptor, let's rewind to the early days and the evolution of SpaceX's rocket engines, starting with the Merlin. Get back to the early 2000s and imagine a private startup from California. SpaceX is taking its first brave steps into the uncharted territory of orbital rockets. This odd audacious endeavor was seen by many as a high-risk gamble, with doubts about its feasibility and potential for success. Elon Musk, driven by a personal mission to revolutionize space travel, self-financed the project using his own fortune from PayPal. The stakes were high, the resources limited, and the challenge monumental. Now comes the Merlin engine that's the heart of SpaceX's initial rockets. Designed with a relentless focus on simplicity and cost-effectiveness, the Merlin was SpaceX's answer to the daunting task of building a rocket engine from scratch. The Merlin 1C, which powered the first successful Falcon 1 launch, was a critical milestone, and its subsequent iterations helped propel the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets into the limelight. So, how does a rocket engine like the Merlin work? Imagine a rocket as a high-tech furnace with two essential ingredients, liquid oxygen and RP-1, a purified form of kerosene. The oxygen, kept at a cryogenic temperature to maintain its liquid state, and the RP-1, which is liquid at room temperature, are pumped into the combustion chamber. Here, they meet, mix, and ignite, unleashing a torrent of energy. This explosive reaction creates high-pressure gases that need to be expelled with force. Think of it as blowing air out of your mouth through a small gap in your lips to create a powerful jet of breath. In the rocket engine, this process takes place in the nozzle, where the gases expand rapidly and accelerate out the back, generating thrust. To make this possible, the Merlin engine relies on a clever mechanism, a gas generator. This small, specialized engine generates hot gases that spin a turbine connected to the main pumps for fuel and oxygen. Once the gases have done their job, they're vented out of the side of the engine. This open-cycle gas generator design, with roots tracing back to the 1940s, exemplifies how engineering ingenuity turns complex challenges into functioning solutions. The story begins with the German V-2 rocket, the world's first long-range ballistic missile, and follows through to the present with SpaceX's revolutionary engines. Back in the early days of SpaceX, the focus was on creating a rocket engine that was not only efficient, but also affordable. Enter the Merlin engine, designed during a time of intense challenge and uncertainty. The engine's mission was simple, be the easiest and cheapest to produce. It was inspired by the gas generators used in rocket designs since the 1940s, representing a blend of historical innovation and modern necessity. But as SpaceX set its sight on the future, the Merlin simplicity was destined to give way to something far more advanced. With the development of the Starship, Elon Musk challenged his engineers to create an engine that was not only the most complex ever built, but also had the highest thrust-to-weight ratio in existence. This was no time for old-school methods. It was time to reinvent the rocket engine from the ground up. So, it led to the creation of the Raptor engine, which incorporates a radical new approach to rocket fuel and engine design. While the Merlin used RP-1, a type of refined kerosene, the Raptor burns liquefied methane at cryogenic temperatures. Methane presents a unique advantage. It burns cleaner than kerosene. Unlike kerosene, which leaves behind carbon soot that can build up and complicate maintenance, methane combustion produces minimal residue. This is crucial for SpaceX's ambitious plan of rapid reusability, where rockets need to be launched multiple times a day. The Raptor engine's design takes complexity to a whole new level with its full-flow staged combustion cycle. This intricate system involves a sophisticated arrangement of pumps, turbines, and plumbing, all working together to achieve unprecedented performance. Unlike the open-cycle gas generator of the Merlin, the Raptor's full-flow cycle improves efficiency and thrust, embodying SpaceX's commitment to pushing the boundaries of what's possible. The Raptor engine represents a monumental leap in rocket propulsion technology, and its design is as innovative as it is complex. To understand just how revolutionary this engine is, let's dive into the detailed workings of its unique cycle. 
At the heart of the Raptor's design is a dual gas turbine system, a departure from traditional rocket engines that typically use a single turbine. In the Raptor, each propellant, including oxygen and methane, has its own dedicated turbine. These turbines are independent of each other, each connected to its respective pump, which means there's no single main shaft driving both pumps. This separation is a key factor in the Raptor's efficiency and performance. Here's how it works. Cryogenic liquids from the tanks are first pumped into individual gas generators. Each gas generator contains a pre-burner, a compact rocket engine designed to partially combust the liquid propellants. The pre-burner's role is to transform the liquid into a gas. But since neither methane nor oxygen can ignite on their own, a bit of cross-combustion is required. This means that a small amount of oxygen is introduced to the methane and vice versa. Once the pre-burners have done their job, the gases produced are directed into the turbines. In a traditional engine, the turbine spins a single shaft that drives the pumps. But the Raptor's dual turbine system means that each turbine is responsible for its own set of pumps. The high-pressure gases from the pre-burners then spin the turbine blades, which in turn drive the pumps that push the new gaseous propellants into the combustion chamber. But how does the process kick off in the first place? SpaceX uses equipment mounted on the launch platform to externally start the turbines. This setup is why the launch mount is designated as Stage Zero for the rocket, as it's crucial for initiating the ignition sequence. One of the key features of the Raptor engine is its closed cycle design. Unlike the Merlin engine, which vents excess gases after the turbine, the Raptor retains all the pressure within the system. This closed system allows for extremely high pressure operation, enhancing performance and efficiency. Additionally, this design is particularly beneficial when using methane, a clean burning fuel. Methane's combustion doesn't produce the soot that kerosene would, which means there's no buildup to clog the system and reduce its effectiveness. Another significant aspect of the Raptor is its full-blown staged combustion cycle. There's no direct path from the fuel or oxygen pumps to the combustion chamber. Instead, all propellants must pass through the pre-burners first. This stage ensures that the gases entering the combustion chamber are at their most reactive state. When the hot, high-pressure gases meet in the combustion chamber, they react more efficiently than if the propellants were still in liquid form. This gas-on-gas -gas combustion generates significantly more energy, pushing the boundaries of what rocket engines can achieve. Elon Musk has a bold claim about the Raptor engine that it has the ability of achieving over 99% efficiency, and this is the highest conceivable by the laws of physics. Musk humorously suggests that only a divine hand could surpass the Raptor's performance in combining molecules with its combustion chamber. It might sound like science fiction, but this is rocket science at its most advanced. To ignite the Raptor engine is to perform a delicate ballet. The dance between the fuel system and the oxygen system must be flawless. Every component is interconnected, and every adjustment impacts the whole. If the synchronization falters, the result could be catastrophic and result in an explosion or at least severe damage to the engine. Let's break down what makes the Raptor engine so remarkable. Despite its relatively compact size, the Raptor generates an impressive amount of thrust. The latest version, Raptor 2, produces 230 metric tons of thrust at sea level. While this isn't the most powerful rocket engine ever, like F1 engine of the Saturn V rocket, which boasted over double the thrust, the Raptor is remarkably compact. You can imagine it like a Jeep parked inside the Saturn V's F1 engine. The Raptor is a mere three meters tall and one and a half meters wide at its nozzle, which can be neatly packed into a nine meter diameter booster. By comparison, the Raptor is a giant leap forward from its predecessors. For instance, the RS-25 engines that power the space shuttle and are adapted for the SLS moon rocket produce about 1,990 metric tons of thrust, but weigh nearly double that of a Raptor. The Raptor, weighing in at just 1,600 kilograms, achieves a superior thrust-to-weight ratio due to its high chamber pressure of 300 bar, or about 4,351 psi. This is a significant increase from the Merlin engine's 100 bar. Higher chamber pressure translates to more thrust, thanks to the way the engine converts pressure into thrust through its throat and nozzle. Elon Musk's vision for the Raptor engine goes beyond its current capabilities. 
His guiding principle is the best part is no part, rooted in its first principles of philosophy. This approach involves questioning every design constraint, removing unnecessary components, and continuously optimizing and automating the process. The shift from Raptor 1 to Raptor 2 showcases this philosophy in action. The newer model features fewer visible parts, integrates smaller pipes and wiring into larger conduits, and eliminates the need for bulky protective shrouds. This streamlining makes the engine lighter, cheaper, and more efficient, crucial for sustainable spaceflight. Look into the future. Musk envisions a fleet of these rockets and thousands of them operating as routinely as jet airliners. The goal is to use the Starship to bridge Earth with Mars, the Moon, and even serve as a point-to-point -point transport system on Earth. In Musk's grand vision, the Starship will not just be a vehicle. It'll be a transformative force in human history, akin to the sailing ships that connected distant continents centuries ago. The Starship is poised to become a cornerstone of our exploration and expansion within the solar system. That's all for today. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to know more about the journey to outer space, you can watch our video related to the journey to Mars. See you again. Bye.